All right, we're going to talk today about right triangle trig, which is something, um, if you're an honors pre-cal, you probably haven't talked about since you were in geometry in either the eighth or ninth grade or even earlier than that, maybe. But anyway, right triangle trig. So uh, what I like to do when we're first learning about right triangle trig in pre-calculus, which is different than geometry, um, is I'd like to, you know, pick your brain a little bit and, and suggest to you that you know a lot more about right triangle trig than you might suspect. Well, for example, the very first thing when you say right triangle trig, you use the word right triangle. So it involves a triangle that has a right angle in it. We denote that with a um, box like this at the 90 degree angle. And in our convention, our convention here, what we're going to do is we're going to let C equal the 90 degree angle. And we'll just put A up here and B up here. And these will be the vertices of the right triangle. And C will always be, well, I don't say always, but 90% of the time will be the right angle. All right. And there's a very famous uh, side across from the right angle, and that's called the hypotenuse. Very fancy name for um, a side. And then these are considered the legs. All right. Now, we are going to designate the angles in this class with the large uh, uppercase letters. And then we're going to designate the side across from from like the side across from A, we're going to call little a. And the side across from B, we're going to call little b. And the side across from C, we're going to call angle C, we're going to call little c. Now, sometimes you can't really tell the difference between big C and little c, but, you know, we'll work with it. All right. So there are a couple of naming conventions. So what else do we know about right triangles? Well, we know that... Um, most of the time when I ask this question, people say, well, there's some special ones. And you're right, there are some special right triangles that we'll talk about in a minute. And there's a 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree right triangle that's special. And that's because if you know one side, you know them all. And the same thing with a 45, 45, 90 degree um, triangle. Again, if you know one side, you know all of the other sides. That's why I call them, they call them special. All right, there's another thing we know about all right triangles, and there's a special relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse. And that's good old Pythagoras. And all at once, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, these are little a squared, little b squared, and little c squared. But when you sum the sides of the square, the square of the sides of the legs, you will get the square of the hypotenuse. Okay. Another thing that we know about uh, triangles in general is that uh, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C has got to be 180 degrees. OK. And if we have C as 90 degrees and we put a 90 degrees here, we know that angle A plus angle B has got to be 90 degrees, which designates this. Our A and B are special, special have a special relationship, and we call those complementary. because they sum to 90 degrees. All right. So far, you know a lot. And then the biggest thing of all is Sokotoa, which back in geometry, you might have remembered have, is the acronym so -ka Toa. Okay. Now, uh, this 
it has to do with the trig relationships of a right triangle. Now, the trig ratio. So I'm going to say sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. Now, I'm putting theta here. Theta, and I'll put a theta in my triangle here. We'll just put theta here next to B. Theta, I'll put it up here. Theta is a Greek letter that we often use for an angle measurement. I've also seen alpha used, uh, beta, and sometimes I've seen gamma used. Those Greek letters are used for angles, okay, to designate angles. So angle theta is also equal to angle B, but um, what I'd like to remember here is, or have you remember, is the sine of theta. Well, these are trig ratios. We're going to call these trig ratios. And they're ratios because they are ratios of sides of a right triangle. And the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, how do we figure out what the opposite is? Well, the opposite is our angle is designated as theta, is the opposite side, which in this case will be B. And the hypotenuse here is C. So the ratio is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And I'll write this here. Opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle theta is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent angle to theta, or angle B, is A. Adjacent means right next door. So that's going to be A over the hypotenuse, which is little c. And this is going to be the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite of theta is B, and the adjacent to theta is A. So that's going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. And how do we know opposite and adjacent? Well, we know opposite and adjacent based on what we designate our angle to be. Okay? So those are the things that we already know about right triangle trig, which is pretty amazing. All right, and then one other thing, angles of elevation, when I do some applications with right triangle trig, angles of elevation, let's say I have a building here, this is my rough sketch of a building, and um, I have a very small person on the ground here. Here we go. Okay. Is measured from the horizontal. Angles of elevation are measured from the horizontal. Okay, so this is the horizontal. This is a building. And uh, this person is looking up to the top of the building because, of course, it's the huge building. It's less, let's say it's the Empire State Building. You're looking to the top and go, wow, that's a really big building. And so they're looking up at this building. And when they look up at a building, what do they do with their head? Well, they elevate their head. So this right here, this theta would be the angle. This angle here is the angle of elevation. Okay. Similarly, if we had a person on top of the building looking down, this person also has a horizontal. Here it is. There's their person's horizontal. And of course, it's going to be parallel, right? These will be parallel because they're both horizontal. 
and this will be a transversal. But anyway, this person on top of the building has to look down. So what happens to their head when they look down? Because that's a long way to fall. Well, they go and they go this direction here, right? So they're looking down. That's depression. So this is going to be also theta, and they're equal if they're looking at each other. So this angle here is the angle of depression. Because you're depressing um, from the horizontal. Okay? But they're, they're, these two are equal because these people are looking at each other and looking at each other, and it's the same transversal. Okay, and so this angle of elevation, because these are alternate interior angles, are going to be congruent. And that only happens when they're looking at each other. Okay, so this is the angle of depression because you depressed your line from the horizontal. And this is the angle of elevation because you elevated your line from that, that horizontal. Okay, so those are the kind of the notes that we need to deal with all sorts of little trig problems. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples. And I happen to have um, the notes here that you should have. Whoops. Um, yeah, this is the guided notes that you should have a copy of. All right, so we're given the following triangle. It's a right triangle, and I see the designated right angle here. And I want to find the sine of theta. Well, I have to figure out what angle is theta. Well, theta is right here. And if I want the sine of theta, that's going to be the opposite, which is this leg, over the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse. So this is O over H. And the cosine is going to be the adjacent to the angle theta over the hypotenuse. So this is A over H. The tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So this is going to be the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So this is going to be O over A. And, you know, sometimes um, I like to write across the page. So I remember my acronym, so TOA. And that's the sine equals the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta equals the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta equals the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Okay. Now, what if I don't designate theta as my angle and I just say sine of A? Well, then that means my angle is, is A, but I still look at it the same way. Now, I will typically, um, if my angle is A, the opposite side is going to be little a, and the adjacent is going to be B. And C is always H, little c, right? So the sine of A is going to be the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be A over C. The cosine of A is going to be the adjacent leg, which is B, over the hypotenuse, which is C. The tangent of A is going to be the opposite, which is A, over the adjacent leg, which is B. So this would be A over B. Now I'm going to switch angles, and I'm going to look at angle B. All right, now it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, but now the opposite of B is little b over the hypotenuse, which is still C. The cosine of B is equal to the adjacent leg, which is A, over its hypotenuse, which is C. And then the tangent of B is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, which will be B over A. All right. Now, when I do this, I, I like to have people make a, a take a notice of uh, these ratios here and see if they can see anything interesting going on. So take a second and see if you see anything interesting. Wow, yeah, I heard it from the back. Someone said, Mrs. Muller, I notice I have an A over C here and an A over C here. Well, gosh, these are equal to each other. And you'd be right. So the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. But what about the cosine of A and the sine of B? Well, guess what? 
those two are equal. That's fascinating. And then what's happening here? These are reciprocals of each other. Now, what do I mean by reciprocals? Well, I have A over B, and then I flip this one, and I get uh, B over A. So these are reciprocals. Well, what's interesting about A and B, and what's their relationship to each other? Well, their relationship is they're complementary. So we can make a note, we can say, if angle A and B are complementary, and what does complementary mean? It's, it means they sum to 90 degrees. Then we can say that the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. And similarly, the cosine of A is equal to the sine of B. And we can say that the tangent of A is equal to 1 over the tangent of B and vice versa. Okay? Which is kind of fascinating. This happens if your angles are complementary to each other, which is a pretty cool relationship. All right, so let's get down to doing some problems. Yep with some numbers, because math is about numbers. Now, this says, solve the, solve the following for x, rounding your answer to the nearest hundredth. Show the equation you use to arrive at your answer. So we're going to solve for x here. Now, when doing that, I like to uh, write on my drawing here um, that what the adjacent, the hypotenuse is, and all of that. So, okay, so my right angle always points, you see how this could be considered an arrow? It points at the hypotenuse, so I like to put a little h there, okay? And then my angle that I was given here is 41, so what is this? In the, what is x? Well, x is the opposite. That's an o, okay? So I'm given an angle, an opposite, and a hypotenuse. So which trig ratio should I use? Because that kind of dictates it. Well, the sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so I think I'll use the sine. So we can say then that the sine of 41 degrees is equal to the opposite, which happens to be, I heard it from the back, x over 16. All right, now I need to solve for x. Well, how do I solve for x? Getting x all by itself, I multiply both sides by 16. So I get x equals 16 times the sine of 41 degrees. Now this, my friends, is the exact answer. There is no rounding involved here. Now we're going to do this on the calculator. So I'm going to pull my calculator out. Here it is. Turn it on. Now I am in radian mode, so I have to change my calculator to degrees because that's what I've been given. All right, and so I'm going to go 16 times the sine of 41 degrees, and we get, you see how this is a decimal? Um, we're rounding it to the nearest hundredth, so I have to say this is approximately then 10.50. Okay. Now, this is the exact answer, and this is the approximate answer, because I had to round it. Okay, let's go to B. B. All right. This is my angle 35, which makes this the opposite. And th this here is the hypotenuse. But this 26 is the adjacent. So now I have the opposite and the adjacent. So the trig ratio I'm going to use is tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of 35 degrees is equal to x over 26. So x is going to equal 26 times the tangent of 35 degrees. And this again is the exact answer. And I can approximate using these squiggles there. Turn the calculator on again over here. And organizational issues tonight. Sorry about that. So we're going to say 
uh, 26 times the tangent of 35 degrees, and we get 18.21. 18.21. If I round up, okay. Next one. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm given the angle of 38 degrees and the hypotenuse appears to be where the x is. I'm going to put an h here. And the 12 is uh, the adjacent. So now I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And so I'm going to use cosine. So this is going to be the cosine of my angle, which is 38 degrees, is equal to um, the adjacent, which is 12 over x. Now, sometimes people have trouble with this, but we're going to treat this just like we treated this one up here. And this we multiplied both sides by 16. Now, x is not 0, so I'm going to multiply, right? We know it's not 0. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So if I do that, let's do that, multiply both sides by x. I get x cosine of 38 degrees is equal to 12. And x is going to equal, because I'm going to divide everything by the cosine of 38. And again, this is the exact answer. And I'm going to round my answer by saying uh, 12. And we can do uh, a division bar, believe it or not, if we hit alpha uh, F1 here. And you can see that this is numer numerator over denominator. So there it is which is really pretty cool. And we can say that this is 12 over cosine of 38 degrees. Um, and that's about 15.23. 15.23 if I were to round up. I'm sorry, I've got to write pretty small, but it's paper we were given. All right, now this next one. My angle here is 52 degrees. The x, this is the hypotenuse over here. x looks to be the adjacent, and the 4 is the opposite. So it looks like I have my angle, the opposite, and the adjacent. So I'm going to use tangent. Okay, so let's use tangent. So we're going to say the tangent of 52 degrees is equal to um, the opposite, which is 4, over the adjacent, which is x. And we're going to multiply both sides by x, and we get x times the tangent of 52 degrees is equal to 4. x equals 4 over the tangent of 52 degrees. And again, this is the exact answer because I did not round. But if I use my calculator here and do alpha f1 again to do the fraction bar, we get 4 over the tangent of 52 degrees. Press enter. And that looks like if I'm rounding up, 3.13. 3.13, and that is, again, approximate. All right, last part of the page here, number four. Number four says, find theta to the nearest tenth of a degree. All right, now, this sign is like a function, right? This is saying the sine of theta is the ratio of two sides. So this number is the ratio of two, two sides. But I have to figure out what theta is. So I am going to hopefully refresh your memory here. Back in the day, you, uh, in Algebra 2, did something with inverses. And there's this, there's this uh, notation. If you have an inverse, if you go function, and I want to undo this, I can say, that, take the inverse of it. The inverse of a function is just, it's saying, plug the x into f to find what the value is. And then this says, undo that. So this equals x. So when you, so it's like when I multiply, if I, let's say I have 2x equals 3, right? I have to do the Inverse operation, I have to undo multiplication. Well, to undo multiplication, I divide or multiply by one half, right? That's the inverse operation, right? So I would divide by two instead of multiply by two, right? And I would solve and I'd get x equals three halves. 
Okay, but what if I had x over 2 equals 3? Well, this is division, so I have to do the inverse operation. I have to undo the division. Well, what do you do? You multiply by 2, right? And you get x equals 6. So I have to undo taking the sine of something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do sine inverse of sine of theta is equal to point or the sine. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other to make it fair. So I'm going to do inverse sine of 0.2146. And so this just undoes the sine, just like division undoes the multiplication. And the multiplication here undoes the division. So this is just left with theta standing here on the left. And then I have the inverse sine of 0.2146. And theta is approximately, because if I put this in my calculator, turn this back on, I want you to notice here that on this calculator, if you press the second button, right here we have the inverse sine operation, the operator. So we're going to push inverse sine of 0 0.2146, and that's going to give me an angle of 12.39. But I'm rounding it to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be approximately 12.4 uh, degrees. That's what my angle is. All right. So how do you suppose I'm going to undo a tangent? Well, we're going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. I didn't give you guys enough space on this piece of paper. Forgive me. All right. So what's left standing if I say take the tangent but then undo it? Well, it's just the theta over here. And that's equal to the inverse tangent of 2.3451. And then theta is approximately, well, believe it or not, there's an inverse tangent key on our calculator here. So we're going to go second inverse tangent of uh, 2.3451. Close parentheses and we get 66.9 degrees. Now I'm still using the approximation squiggly symbol here because I still have a bunch of more decimals under here. And this is, this is exact and this is not. Okay, last but not least, what am I going to do with part C? I heard it. We're going to take the inverse cosine of both sides. So we give enough room and theta is left here and this is the inverse cosine then of 0 0.3244 and that button on our calculator is in between the uh, you hit the second key and the inverse cosine of 0 0.3244 close parentheses and we get 71.1 degrees approximately okay all right, page one done. Page two. Now we're going to solve for the variables, okay, right, without a calculator. What That's going to require us to know what the relationship is between our special right triangles. Well, let's talk about special right triangles for a second. Let me bring my notes back out here. Special right triangles. Now, we said there were two types of special right triangles. We said that there was the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90, right? So I am going to start off with the 45, 45, 90, because they have two angles that are the same, which makes it a pretty simple case to prove, okay? So this is the 45, 45, 90 triangle. All right, and I'm going to draw it a little bit differently here just because we're so used to drawing them one way. I'm going to put mine on its side like this where this is my right angle. All right, now the 90 degree angle is obviously the one with the box mark, mark here. And then this is going to be 45 degrees and this is 45 degrees. 
which makes this a special triangle other than the fact that it's a right triangle. If I have the base angles of a triangle congruent to each other, what is also true? Well, that means the, the sides opposite are congruent to each other, right? And so if they're congruent to each other, I can call this um, side X and this one X, right? Because I could have used A or B, but they're both the same, right? So I'm going to call this one X and this one X. And I'm going to call this one, since it's across from the hypotenuse, our, our little C, because we're used to having the hypotenuse be C. Now this is a right triangle, and I promised you with a special right triangle, if you know one side, you know them all. But here I have two different variables, so I don't quite know them all yet. But I can use the Pythagorean relationship here. I can say x squared plus x squared has to equal c squared using Pythagoras, right? That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it just so happens that a equals b in this case. All right, so that means I have two of them, 2x squared equals c squared. And if I want c, c is going to equal the square root of 2x squared. Now, ordinarily, it would be plus or minus, but this is a side length. So I'm going to say that this is x root 2. So the special relationship is x, 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 x root 2. So if I know one of the sides is x, the hypotenuse is going to be x root 2. So there we go. If I know one of the sides, I know them all. Okay? And if I know the hypotenuse, I know that has to equal x root 2. And uh, then I can solve for the other, the other two sides. All right, so that's the 45, 45, 90 situation. All right, next is the 30, 60, 90, which is a little bit more complicated, but not really. 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. All right. Now to prove this one, I'm going to use an equilateral triangle. So the so the the challenge to me here is to draw an equilateral triangle. <laughs> equilateral means they are equal sides, right? This side's equal to this side is equal to this side. But if all the sides are equal, guess what? The base angles also have to be equal. So this would be 60 degrees, and this is 60 degrees, and this would be 60 degrees up here. But I don't have a right angle anywhere, so I am going to drop a perpendicular. Let me use a different color here. Let's use green. I'm going to drop my perpendicular. There it is, dropped. And this is going to be an angle bisector here. So if this is 60, this will be 30, and this will be 30. So I have, with my equilateral triangle, split it up into two 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay? And um, so there you have it. So what I'm going to do now is um, call this uh, across from uh, the 30 degree angle. I'm going to call that um, X. Okay. And then this whole side, right? If this if this is x from here to here, this halfway point, and this is x, what is the whole side length going to be? Well, this side's going to be 2x, right? Because they're all equal, right? So this would be 2x, and this whole side length then here is 2x, right? So what's the thing I don't know? Well, if I know that this, and I'm going to pull my 30, 60, 90 triangle out individually so we can look at one of them. Remember, this is my right angle. This is my 60 degree angle. This is my 30 degree angle. This is 2x, and I said this was x. I don't know this one. I don't know this side, so I'm going to call it b, right? And so we can use Pythagoras on one of these right triangles and say that x squared plus b squared has to equal 2x quantity squared. 
So we get x squared plus b squared equals, and when I use the properties of exponents here, I have to square both things inside. So that's going to be 4x squared. And then I'm going to get b squared all by itself. So I'm going to subtract an x squared from both sides and get 3x squared. And so then I get b equals the square root of 3x squared. And again, this is a side length, so I'm going to take the positive principal root here and get b equals x root 3. So my relationship on my 30, 60, 90 triangles is the smallest side, which is across from the 30 degree angle, is x. The altitude or the height or the, or the other side across from the 60 is x root 3, and the largest side is 2x. Okay, and triangles are a lot like the Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The smallest side gets the smallest angle across from it. The largest side gets the biggest side across from it. And yes, the square root of 3 is less than 2. It's about 1.732. So this one is the middle uh, sized leg. And so the middle sized angle is 60. So the smallest side gets the x, which is across from the 30. The middle one gets x root 3, which is across from the 60. And the 2x, which is the longest side of the right triangle, which the hypotenuse gets 2x. So if I know, again, one side, I know them all because there's only one x here. That's what makes special right triangles so powerful. All right, so let's do some examples. Got a page of examples here. All right, we're going to try to figure out what the values are here. Well, I have a right angle and 45. So this, I'm pretty darn sure, z has to be... 45 degrees. So we know z has to be 45 degrees. Everybody agree? So if this is 45, 45, 90, I like to put my relationship on there, which would be x, x, x root 2. Uh, so what does x have to be? Well, x has to be equal to 7. And y, which is the hypotenuse, has to be x root 2. Well, x is equal to 7 right over here. That's what it says. So that's going to be 7 root 2. And with that, we got our first special right triangle done. Now, when I say solve the right triangle, that means find all the other pieces, OK? Find all the other pieces of information. All right, this next one, b. This is a 30, 60, 90. So what goes, now I'm, it, I know it's confusing because I have an x here, but the relationship still, is, this x that I'm writing on here is not the same. But across from the 30 is x, across from the 60 is x root 3, and across from the hypotenuse is 2x. Okay, so what is x equal in the pink? Well, the pink x equals 10. Okay, so this x has to equal this pink x, so the real x is 10 root 3. And y is clearly, uh, we denote that as 60 degrees, right? Because that's, that's what that measure has to be. These have to be complementary. And the z has to be 2 times x. Well, it's 2 times the pink x, so this is just 20. OK? Now, this one doesn't give us any angles except the right angle on part C, but it does tell us that we have two sides that are congruent. So what does that mean about the base angles? Well, the base angles also have to be congruent. And so if I have a 90 degree angle and they have to sum, the base angles have to sum to 90, but they have to be equal, then we know that these have to be 45s. And then our relationship is going to be x, x, x root 2 with the 45, 45, 90 special right triangle situation. So where's our information? Our information, well, we know right away that y is equal to 45 degrees. That was pretty simple to find out. Now I have to figure out what x is, the black x here. But I know the pink x root 2 is equal to 8, so I could solve for the pink x. So I can say that x root 2 is equal to 8. x equals 8 divided by the square root of 2. And if I were to rationalize that, 
by multiplying by root 2 over root 2, I get 8 root 2 over uh, 2, because root 2 times root 2 is 2, and this is in 4 uh, root 2. So x equals 4 root 2. Okay, so we just use the relationship on the hypotenuse of the pink x root 2 to solve for the pink x, which has to equal the black x here. Okay? All right, D. This is I've got to keep it all equal, right? This is 30, 60, 90. Right away, we can see that the z has to equal 60 degrees. And across from the 30 it has to be the x. Across from the 60, right, because it's 60, has to be the x root 3. And then this has to be 2x, right? Because the relationship is x, x root 3, 2x in the pink. And so where's our information? Our information is 5 root 3. So x root 3 has to equal 5 root 3. If I divide both sides by root 3, I get x equals 5. So the pink x equals 5. So x equals here the 2x right, because this pink x here equals 5, so this has to be 10, and then um, this pink x here has to equal 5, right, so that's, that means this y has to equal 5. I need to change my worksheet here because I'm getting myself confused, <laughs> right, right, because the pink x here, this is pink x root 3, so the pink x is 5, which makes this 2x and this 5 root 3, and this, this y has to be 5. Man. I need to change them to A and B and C. I'll probably do that on a quiz so you guys don't get confused. All right. Now, this one has uh, some interesting stuff going on here because uh, I have two triangles in the mix here. All right. So these are uh, double steps where we have more than one step, okay? All right, well, so I have um, a right angle here. Now, this is also a right angle by definition here because I have a line here. These are uh, supplementary, so that's going to, they're both 90. And it looks like if this is my angle 26, this here is going to be my opposite. And this part here, I'm going to call this, this A from here to here, if that's all right. Okay, so this is going to be my adjacent. I call it A because it's going to be the adjacent here. And this would be my opposite. So I can say that the tangent of 26 degrees is equal to 20, which is the opposite over A. And I have to now I'll call this B, although it is the adjacent again. I'm sorry about that. But right, because uh, this X here equals A plus B. So I have to know what A is and I have to know what B is in order to find out what X is. So I'm going to multiply both sides here by uh, A. So I get A times the tangent of 26 degrees equals 20. A equals 20 over the tangent of 26 degrees. And then um, a is approximately, I'll do that in a second when I pull my calculator out, but let's set this one up. Um, this is my theta, which is 38. This is going to be my opposite. 20 is still the opposite, and B will be the adjacent. So I can say then the tangent of 38 degrees is equal to 20 over B, multiplying both sides by B. I can say B, whoops, let's move this over. B times the tangent of 38 degrees is equal to 20. B equals 20 over the tangent of 38 degrees. Okay, so B is approximately. So let's do the math here. So we're going to go alpha F1. And I'm going to say 20 divided by the tangent of 26. And that's uh, 41 point, and I'm around this to the hundredth, I guess. Zero, one. And then B is going to be 20 divided by the tangent of 38 degrees, which is about 
25.5, whoops, 25.5, well, like 25.60. But x is going to equal a plus b, which is approximately, I'm running out of space here, sorry, which is approximately, well, how can I do that exactly? Well, I can go up and grab this ratio and add it to grab this ratio and press enter. And we get 66.60. So that's what x equals. Okay. Did I do that right? 20 over the tangent of 38, and we add them together. Yep, that looks good. All right, let's do this last one. All right, so now I have two right triangles here that it doesn't look like I have two right triangles. Now, I'm sorry about my angle here. It looks <laughs> a little bit, you know, not uniform, but it, that still means it's the right angle. But I'm going to suggest to you that we have two right triangles here. We have this big one, if you can see the big one. See the big one? And then we have another one here in disguise, right? This one here. So we have two right angles. And I know this is 15. And I don't know what this one is. But this, this one is green and pink, so I'm going to call this Y because it's, you know, I've got X over here. Now, X just goes from here to here. So the leg on this, on this side here is X plus 15. Okay, and the leg on, this, on the green triangle is 15. So I can say that the 44 is across from the... Y, so that's the opposite, and this would be the adjacent. So I can say that the tangent of 44 degrees is equal to Y over 15. Okay, and so Y equals 15 times the tangent of 44 degrees, right? Because we multiply both sides by 15. And if I want to have an exact answer, I'm going to keep this as my Y. And then I'm going to set up a ratio for this pink triangle using 24 as my angle. And the opposite is going to be y. So I can write it as the tangent of 24 degrees is equal to y over the opposite of the adjacent, which is the y is the opposite. X, I can say this is x plus 15. Right? Because x plus 15 is this entire leg here. And I know what y is, so I'm going to plug that in. Let's plug that in. So I go um, the tangent of 24 degrees equals uh, 15 times the tangent of 44 degrees over x plus 15. Now I have to solve for x because that's my mission. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 15. So I'm going to get x plus 15 times the tangent of 24 equals 15 times the tangent of 44 because it would cancel out if I multiply both sides by that. And then I'm going to get x plus 15 is equal to, I'm going to divide by the tangent of 24, so this will be 15 times the tangent of 44 degrees over the tangent of 24 degrees now, how do I get the x all by itself now? I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. So x is going to equal 15 times the tangent of 44 degrees over the tangent of 24 degrees minus 15. And I'm going to put that all in my calculator. So let's see how that math goes. Turn it on. And I'm going to do my alpha F1 to get the fraction. And so that's going to be 15 times the tangent of 44. Close the parentheses, hop down. Uh, the tangent of 24 on the bottom. And then on the outside, minus 15. And that gives me 
and that's what x equals. Okay, so those were my two challenger problems, which I thought were pretty cool. All right, so that is a quick introduction into um, right triangle trig, in, including a, a little exercise on, let's review really quickly, on special right triangles, right? So we talked about all the things we already knew about right triangles, and then we added the special right triangles. All right, so what we need you to do now is to um, try the homework, and we will talk to you next time. Thanks for listening.